Welcome back to the Tide Degree Hanger. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with another video. This time I want to talk to you about Fans Toys Jabber, their FT39, the Fans Toys take on G1 Transformers Blur. And I want to say it's a very good figure. I'm very happy with it, very impressed with it. I'm going to tell you why there's pluses, and of course there's minuses. So we'll go over all that. But I got this from Show Z, and so of course I paid like 10 bucks less than everyone else. I think I paid like $93 for it. Uh, said and done, and so I'm very happy. And um, we'll get right into it, I'll tell you why. So there's been a lot of talk about the paint and it doesn't match up and some lack of articulation. So we're gonna go into all of that here in just a second. But the first thing right out of the box is you need to clip the head in all the way. Don't know why, every single copy, the head's not clipped in and you have to just simply clip the head in all the way. And, and it seems like a lot of people have to push real hard. Mine wasn't that hard. I like this butt flap up, the butt flaps down. I like to put the butt flap up. Uh, that's just something I like about it. And you have to mess with these little pieces here. Sometimes uh, not as bad as I would thought it would be. But then the other thing is right here. You have to pull this little flap out, this tab out, and then tab it in. Now, one thing I noticed when I was doing that was that uh, you, you see where these rub. I'm trying to get an angle on that. That's blue on blue rubbing right there, just out of the box. And if that was not, if that was painted, this initial just set up right out of the box, you just scrape paint off to set this guy up. So, so I think that's why this blue part wasn't painted. So we're gonna get into talking real quick about the paint since that's a big deal from everybody. So looking at the top, he has, that's actually like a, like a orangish yellow translucent piece. His face is painted well. His eyes, I, I think the eyes are painted okay, but most people would expect like a metallic so it would glisten better, but I think it does the job. I would have preferred more metallic. I do love where this People are trying to say it's purple. It's kind of a deep blue, and so, I mean, I guess you could, it gets into the purple of the palette, but I do like the way it looks, and a lot of people fear there's gonna be a, a like a blue repaint, but I think this color scheme looks great. I mean, you really, when you're dealing with blues, you got blue against blue. I mean, it's it definitely looks good. It fits the character very well. But really, none of this light blue teal is painted at all so that's that's something the gray on the bottom looks good the back number 33 all this there's not much paint though like just really minimalistic i think yeah that's paint right there very minimalistic on the paint and guess what this thing would just you'd have paint flakes everywhere the other thing you need to do is you need to pull the heel spur out coming out of the box because you know it's just uh, protecting the heel spur and all that stuff Everyone wants to wonder why does Fansway ship this stuff like this. Real quick, let's get into a comparison of the first pick so you can see, okay, there's the color difference between the promo shot and this guy. So I, I just don't think that this is that bad. I don't think it's that far off. I mean, it is darker, it is purpler. So I still think it looks good. Next shot, G1 comparison. The G1 tune comparison, I wanna throw that out there right away so that everybody can see this. And I think it's pretty good. Like, it looks like the chest a little narrower uh, on the tune one. So, but I mean, you gotta bring this thing to reality and real world. And then also, uh, I, I think they followed the aesthetic really well and all of the colors all the way up look good to me. I mean, it all matches and it works. And I like this chest plate the best because it is very tune accurate. Okay, let's quickly get into the accessories real fast. And we have two different guns, uh, all silver, little bit of paint right here on this guy. He's got two handles, uh, they both pop down. Make sure you have your uh, spudger or your good fingernails. That's for his hand. This is for his alt mode. We'll see all that here in just a little bit. We've got this other gun. I don't see any paint on it. Looks good, nice shiny silver. And then you have his face, which I'm not gonna swap his faces out. And let's see if we can capture the screaming face. 
It's a nice face. I really like the one that's on him. It fits him perfect. I don't ever see him really screaming. And then we have this other chest plate. I'm not going to use it, but I'll show you how to put it in. You have to partially transform him. So you unhook his head, pop this up, unhook this piece, and then you've got the two screws. You got a screw here and a screw here. And then you will lift it out and, and put it in. It's not that hard. I just uh, don't, I don't want to use it when you put this back in too. You have to lift that up over that. So anyway, it's one of those things where it's not as easy to swap out as I would like to see it, but it is an option and it's there. Here is his Target Master. Target Masters are cool. I love the Target Masters. Uh, you know, he's got his a uh, little bit of head side to side rotation, arm all the way around, a little bit of rotation in the elbow with a ball joint, uh, waist swivel, which is cool, waist swivel on this guy. And then all the way forward, all the way back, uh, the ball joint at the knee, and then ankle rockers and tilt and everything all the way around. Let's go ahead and get this guy transformed up real quick. So you can just flip it all the way up. Now take it from the back, flip it all the way up. And uh, if it was transformed all the way, you can actually have it tabbed in, so you'd have to untab this tab. Flip it all the way up. Then you want to fold his arms like backwards. A backwards fold on the arms. And then you're going to flip his legs around. Just the lower legs, so that these little tabs can line up. Right here. Line up those tabs. Flip of this over, and then this is where it gets to be a little bit tricky because you have to have these lined up just right for it to angles to look right. I mean, you can have it however you want, really, but you want the angles to look right. So there you go. Flip the handle down, and you have his this mode right here, his gun mode. And I don't know. I have trouble getting my blur here, my jabber to hold it well. This hand holds it, the other one doesn't, so there it is. Which I think that whole gimmick's cool. I love that they give these to us. It is awesome, so please don't stop giving it to us, man. Okay, getting into articulation, which is a lot of people complain about articulation. Uh, that's as far out as it goes. And of course it goes all the way around, and there's no way to cheat on that. But you have your bicep swivel, you have a 90 degree elbow. There are people complaining about his articulation and it doesn't bother me because I don't need it for that many different poses. You do have a ratcheted waist and thigh swivel. And if, depending on what you do with this diaper here, you can, okay, I had to correct all that. I didn't put the tab back in when I showed you how to change out the chest. Okay, so anyway, now he's solid. He's solid, don't worry, he's solid. If you flip up his diaper, you can go a lot higher. And I don't think I'm gonna risk him trying to do a one-legged stand. So I don't think, with all the weight, I don't think it's gonna work. Anyway, going backwards, uh, you can cheat, like lifting that butt flap up. You can get all the way to there. And then all the way out to the side. A little higher actually and then the knee just 90 and then of course you have your ankle rocker a little bit not much front not really anything front to back and I don't think I'd want on this figure front and back now that we're talking about articulation I do want to point out that he has the same lack of articulation that hoodlum does except his range is a little bit better when it comes to that so I want to point that out so these figures share a lot in common probably developed around the same time and probably the concern and emphasis wasn't as deep into the articulation level such as it is now or it's extreme. Okay, so we're gonna do a few comparisons here, some comparison shots. We're gonna have the A team in here or the F team for fan toys, but this is what he looks like with his fan toys companions and then of course what else fan toys didn't make that we could fill in with like a Ultra Magnus. And looking at it, I think it looks really good. Uh, 
it's a nice set. It's a nice team. What do you think? So let's swap out some players. This would be more along the lines how I would prefer to display this guy simply because I prefer bigger. <laughs> I prefer the Rodimus bigger and I prefer the bigger uh, Toy World Leia. I'm in the minority on that one, I know. I really don't care. But this is what it looked like. But let's get into an ultimate B team. What do you think? Okay, so we just took out all the fans toys options and stuff, threw in some different options, and I want to point out a few things. First of all, he is taller than the Takara. And when I say the B team, these are just the ones I would not put up in my main display, put them in other displays. But uh, there's nothing wrong with Takara, he's fine. But he's shorter. So Takara is shorter than Jabber. This is the KO oversize of the Titan Returns, which is another RC option a lot of people can use as a masterpiece. Uh, open and play Big Spring. Forgot to put this guy in the beginning. I wanted to show him actually with all of it. And Blaster in there. I mean, he's considered a movie bot, I guess a lot of people do. And he's just not fans toys. And he's a good blaster. So anyway, this is like a different display option and some different figures you can compare height and size and all that great stuff to. And I forgot about Dre, or I mean Prime. This is the MP44 next to him. So you can kind of see size difference. And you know, I think he's, he's a good size. I of course like my bots taller and bigger. But, you know, I accept the size that he is, and he works. So let's get into some transformation. Megatron, 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 Megatron. I want to be part of the Decepticons. The Autobots don't really appreciate me. They, they always have to go away, go away. I do a whole lot of stuff for them. They don't really appreciate me. They don't like me at all. Ha <laughs> ha, well, Blur, we appreciate you. Be a Decepticon. Your first mission, you're going to go report to me weekly because you're going to spy on the Autobots. And then you'll come back and hang out with us at this date here. Megatron, that's a really, really, really good idea. I'm, I'm going to do that right now. Megatron, for being so fast, he is slow on the uptake. <laughs> Megatron, 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 this is a blur. I, I'm back to hang out with you guys. Oh, yes, blur. Ha <laughs> ha, Megatron, my namesake told me you'd come. I have big plans for you. Let's go. Ah, that guy's real annoying. Ah. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do with this guy is you're going to untab his head, and then you're going to open it up from here. You need to close this little tab down. And I'm gonna, we're going to open this up here, and then shift all of this down out of the way you can go ahead and flip it around right now then getting back up to the top this back part needs to come back and then you're going to push this piece down and then you need to lift this part here which is i guess is going to be the dashboard or something so you lift that up and then there is barely any clearance and you have to be super careful doing this when you move the head down because there's paint on that and people have people have chipped the paint on this so then you're gonna flip the head around once it's through there all right from here you're going to push the seat forward and all the way around so the seat comes out the other side and then the head should fit just right into that slot that is tight and you can see it's starting to come together with the seat and all that and then it stays kind of floppy while you're doing all this so it does kind of it's kind of a challenge so anyway you can swing the arms back at this point on those levers and now we're going to go ahead and get into those arms all right moving on to the arms we're going to untab all of this fun stuff. I wanted to hold his own weight. There, it came untabbed. And then we're going to move this up. This piece here goes up. And it just all seemed to fall right in. Hand and everything fell right in there just fine. Uh, but I think we need to rotate this hand this way for when we, when we get into it later, it'll make sense. And this, there we go, there we go. And we got one arm sort of almost done. Then we can do the other one. 
Before we get that, we have to extend this. I didn't do that just yet. So you open that piece, now you fold this in, and so now it's all extended. But now it's gonna be harder to handle and control now that that's going on. So doing the second arm, we're gonna do all the same stuff we just did. Let's go ahead and face the hand out now. The tab is, okay, that one was easier to open than the other one. Flip this up. And I'm, I'm going to put it in place now. We're gonna undo it when we connect it, but there's too much stuff flopping around on this thing. And he's like, oh, here, let's see what it looks like. like oh, yeah, so let's get the other arm extended. It's really just an arm extension. And uh, most people use spudgers to get this out. I actually, uh, usually just my nails do, but I've got a coated piece here that works. And then, I gotta get that piece out, like so. Fold this up, and get it into there. And now here we are. Ready to go, now we gotta work on, you have to flip this, it's not the waist piece. This piece needs to flip around, and then you're in position with this. Ah. Now we gotta open this tab out of here. Had to use my finger like crazy. Okay, now we're gonna tab that into this piece here, this front, and it's not gonna wanna stay. And there it goes. And let's go ahead and fold this piece down right here also. The control panel, the steering wheel and all that. And then secure that piece. All right, you have to make sure that the chair is just right out of the way. I had the chair in the way for a second. I couldn't figure out why it wasn't going down this time. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and work on the legs. So down here on the legs. Okay, making sure that you have this faced forward like so. Let's go ahead and open these pieces on the le lower legs. Oh, close up the heel spurs, and you can fold that flat. And these are gonna open up. We're gonna pull out these pieces here. Now these pieces are super fragile, fragile. And we're gonna get those out fold those pieces out. And the reason I'm doing both legs at the same time is because they are going to be connecting to each other. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, slide this piece up. Right here. And we can push those two pieces together. Uh, we need to get the other piece slid up right there. Slide those two together like that. Tab this in to each other right here. And then connect these two pieces right here. There you go. Now, all that in place, we're going to be folding this down. Clearing this. Looks like a mess, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, so we're going to collapse this onto here, like so. And then we need to get all this in position. So I'm gonna open this back up now, because I didn't want it flopping all over the place like crazy. And then slide Oh, pull this, pull this tab down here on both sides. 
and then get the fist slotted into there to the fist slot. Hold the fist slot down. Right here is a fist slot, fold it down. Make sure the fist goes into it. And then we're gonna collapse all that onto here and this tabs in like that. Oh, running out of juice in my camera. We'll get that tightened in a little better here in a second. All right, so we're gonna switch cameras and so it might look a little bit different here going out. Okay, now we've got this already in position. Just on the first one, because uh, I think I just slid it, but you wanna get that leg filler out of the way. The, the tricky part is this, this little piece here hanging. You need to make sure it's positioned forward. And then you're gonna bring it back out a bit there's a small hinge. Let me see if I can get that. Yeah, this, you do not want to break this piece. So, now, when you, since I've already, we've already put this all in, you need to get this little tab inside here. And then, basically, make all this line up with it. And... It's always easier said than done. Now this is still got to get inside there. Let's go ahead and go from a different angle. And you got to be real careful. This is the piece that breaks the most for everyone. So there it is. Now you got it in at that angle. I'm going to do it again show you got it in I rotated it in like this at that angle and then now I'm gonna basically just push this rest in like that and line it all up <laughs> so it's looking good though okay we're gonna do the same thing over here tabbing that pushing this down um, and then we we moved this piece and it moved back. Get that hand in that hand groove slot. Give it a... So we want to line it all up and get it all in there like that. Get this tab. You see what I'm working with here? This tab into here. And I want to say that if any time you're, you feel like you have to give too much pressure, you need to stop and look. And that's not just with this figure, but you may need to make sure everything's lined up just right, or you might run into some problems. That snapped in with about. 650 pounds of pressure. <laughs> okay, down here. Now, I might not have shown this on the first one because uh, I think I just slid it, but you want to get that leg filler out of the way. Just rotate it forward and out. And... Getting it in there without breaking it. And there we go. Now we start tabbing all this stuff in really well. Right there, that needs to go together better. And then the back piece. Now we gotta be we got to get these pieces here 
lined up right and then this is going to come over onto here and then i guess i got to open these things back here this way is to like shift this shift it down like that and then lift them up a bit there got it shift it down ah, and lift it up you know it's interesting because like all these little bitty things here and there are what make the all mode look so much better tab that in just that piece there we're gonna have to slide this bad boy here let's get that down and around same thing over here down and around down more move that foot out of the way before I put a little bit more pressure on that guy to go down more and I think we have them I'm gonna tighten them up a little bit more and we're gonna have a better look at them but pretty much there just got to make sure every one of the 5,000 tabs are in place. We'll get right back to it. All right, and the last thing I'm going to do is fold this tip forward, and we have Blur in all of his greatness. There he is, and he does look really good. That is an amazing looking blur. Amazing looking alt mode. Man, that looks good. It looks so spot on. So spot on and accurate. So let's go ahead and do some comparisons. Here he is next to Unique Toys. And yeah, way more blur like than Unique Toys. I actually think that I, I passed on Unique Toys on the first run. I think it was because the alt mode was just so bad. I just didn't, I was like, well, that thing's not that great. Man. And the Fan Toys one is really good. Now it's a lot of work to get to it, so don't, don't get me wrong. I put them back right away. I'm sorry I keep my uh, chug stuff in the package. I got rid of all my loose chug stuff, or most of my loose chug stuff. And that's what it looks like compared to the Titan Returns one, or I guess, you know, the, the import one. Here he is next to Takara's Hot Rod. And yeah, that looks good. And that's, I think that, uh, you know, probably the Hoodlum next to Hoodlum, uh, Hoodlum's bigger. And so they probably ah, match up better, but yeah, I think that looks good. That looks fine. Let's get into some of the detail on this guy. So we have all the same paint carried over from, from the first mode, from the robot mode. So the dark blues, or people call it purple, but the white, you can make that clear. Uh, it's kind of an eggshell white. We have the blue unpainted. We have the seat in here. We have the control panel. And then pretty much almost no gap there. So that's good. Uh, looking at the bottom of it, one more thing is you have to clip that in. I don't know if I showed that. But yeah, this is, uh, this piece is going right there. Very nice alt mode. Very nice from the back. You got the engine and all that stuff. A lot of work to get here, but I think it's really, really worth getting to it. Let's go ahead and put the guns on. So this is the bigger gun, so I'm gonna go ahead and clip that in here. And there it is. That's what he looks like with the bigger gun. So definitely an excellent display mode. Or, you can put the smaller gun on. You have to put it on sideways, sorry. And so whichever one, whatever look you like the most, the handle hanging off the side, is what, how you can display this guy. So I really do like this Blur. I think this is a good figure. He's painted well enough for me. He has a little, little bit of limited articulation, but that doesn't bother me so much. But I want to say that he has the best alt mode. And his robot mode looks good, aside from his little diaper thing. 
but it doesn't bother me as much in person as I thought it would. So I really like this guy. I'm not gonna get rid of my Unique Toys version at all because I think that one's a decent one also. It's a lot of fun. So you can get yours at Show Z if you want. Like, subscribe, and Tidarium Hanger, out.